Uh, well, as a Quran teacher, I will be talking about Quran. Alhamdulillah, it, it is a really it's a pleasure when you see the kids learning Quran and uh, uh, learning Quran with with tajweed. This is the main thing. And my nasiha and advice to the brothers, inshallah ta'ala, especially because many of the parents are here, do not rely on the 40 minutes that they get daily in school. I was trying to get this message a long time ago. Do not rely. Make Qira'atul Qur'an. Make Qira'atul Qur'an a habit at home. Because remember, whatever you give them at home, whatever education you give them at home, that's what they'll do once they'll grow. For example, they do 40 minutes with me here, or they do 40 minutes here in school. Likewise, they've got homework, math homework, English homework, they've got Arabic homework, they've got science homework, and they have to give times for these homeworks. Make sure they give time for Quran. Make sure they give time for Quran. Because that's what they're going to find tomorrow in Qabr. How many people, they've got our age, they don't know how to read Quran. Oh, it's just like the hadith that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa When they read Quran, they're struggling in reading Quran. Unfortunately, because they ha there was no effort whatsoever when they were younger. Now, alhamdulillah, we've got, especially now in this generation, most of the teachers, when they teach, they teach with qawaid al-tajweed, with the rule of tajweed, not qul huruf, how to pronounce the letter. Like, you know, farq bayna da wa da, da wa da, za. These main teachers are qualified. So this, the students and this generation will know and they're learning it. But once they go home, they need to practice. And once they get home and once they practice, give them at least, at least minimum 10 minutes a day. Those 10 minutes could be your key to Jannah. We don't know. Where is Allah? Allah's rahmat, where is it? Wallahu a'lam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven some people that they've, they've never ever, they've never ever touched Quran in their life. Now you giving education to your boy or you giving education to the girl that on a daily basis, start your day or finish your day with Quran. Just imagine all their life, they start their day or they end their day with Quran. You'll be going, I'll be going, everyone's going to go one day. But as long as that goes on with our kids, the next generation, the next generation, how our akhirat account will still be open and will get rewarded. So therefore, my advice to the parents especially is please, this year, next year, and whatever, when they go high school, secondary school, high school, make sure they've got 10 minutes for Quran on a daily basis. Uh, there's a few things, uh, mashallah, uh, which I've discovered myself, because I've studied in this country, me, myself, I've studied in this country, I've studied here in Dewsbury, I'm far from Dewsbury, and uh, that was a generation, and this is a generation. And uh, there's many, many, many new things I've discovered. There's one thing, though, I will uh, advise you in, uh, which is really, really, really important, is uh, let us help each other in a sense. For example, let me just give you a random example. This competition, there were students who took part in this competition. This student took part of this competition. They were brothers and sisters. One was in a higher level and one is in a higher class. One was in year six, the other one was in year four. But they do not help each other. They do not read with each other. Let the brothers and sisters give them that idea. Son, you've done your work, you've done your job. Help your brother, help your sister. Most of the students you've seen here, brothers and sisters, they've learned this today, today. They've learned, they've learned this with me, but they've practiced it together. Year six, year four, you practice with your brother, you practice with your sister. And if they don't want to listen, you talk to me. Let's have this in the houses amongst brothers and sisters, especially in Quran. In other subjects, of course, there is. But in Quran, is missing. 
Why? There's two things. There's two faida in this. Two benefits. The first one is the elder one. That's a revision for him. And the second one, the second benefit is the second, the youngest one will have respect for the other, one, for the big one automatically. When he'll grow up, ah, when he'll be talking to his son, your uncle, your auntie, she used to help me in my Quran. That's what we need. That's we need. We need help each other. Give them that, um, uh, that if you call it education. Help, you finished yours, help your brother. You finished yours, help your sister in Quran, especially in Quran. Because, of course, here yeah, we do as much as we can, but the main job and the main work should be done at home. And the main work, the main job, when it's done at home, okay, sometimes parents can't do it. Make the brothers, the eldest brother or sister, make them responsible. Inshallah. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.